Hey YouTube, working on the 56 pickup today, specifically on the door alignment. Let's see if you guys uh, can see this on camera, but uh, up here at the top, this is supposed to be flush with the cab. The door is supposed to be flush with the cab right here. And uh, it's a good 3 eighths of an inch in. And if you look at the back of the door, this is sticking out about a quarter of an inch. So this whole door needs to be tilted this way. And to do that, and I've already got started on this, the fender is going to have to be adjusted because if this comes out a little and this goes in a little down here on the bottom right this fender is going to have to go in a little here too so I already unbolted the fender and uh, then I, I jumped underneath to take a look at it <clears throat> to see what we're gonna have to do to get that fender to go back in and See if I can get focused on this for you. This is the mount right here. Here we go. This is the mount right here and the bolt goes through and holds that fender on. And this piece is almost rusted off. So that piece is going to have to be replaced. It's not, look, it's not even held on on the back. And, uh, and this fender is going to have to, the fender needs to go in more. And so that this whole piece not only is it going to have to be replaced, but it's going to have to be moved back a little this way towards the driver's side to allow that fender to go back in again. So I do have the uh, a brand new uh, reproduction rear lower fender mount. Uh, I bought this a few months ago in anticipation that I might need it. It was only like I don't know, it was less than 10 bucks, so I bought it just in case. It's just the way I roll. And uh, so I'll figure out what it's gonna take to get this piece mounted in the correct location on the car. Second issue we have is this fender is also hidden right here. And that's part of the cab and that might have to be banged in a little bit. So I think I'm gonna take this fender off. I think it'll be easier to uh, get to this piece which is gonna to need to be welded on anyway. Okay, upon further inspection, simple jobs get complicated really fast. Pull this fender off to do it right. I'm going to have to pull the bumper off, which doesn't seem to be a big deal, a half a dozen bolts. This piece is going to have to come off because there's some bolts to the fender right in here. And uh, looks like there's one down there. That might be holding. Yes, there is one down there. Not the, uh, going through the inner fender. Of course, all these bolts along the top. And then inside the wheel well, the wheel will have to come off. And there's a, a number of bolts in here. Have to undo the uh, running light and the headlight. Well, might as well get cracking. All right, I've got the piece off that goes here that holds the hood latch. Got it laying over here. I'm starting to bag my bolts. 
Got the uh, chrome ring off, three screws holding that, two screws holding the uh, lens on there. And uh, I'll take these screws out, get the headlight out. There's two nuts on the back of this. Take that light out, undo the wiring. And then uh, next step would be unbolt the bumper. All right, we got everything off. Here's the fender. Just so you can see where all the bolts were. We had all of these bolts here. A couple along the side here. Here, here. Of course, we had the one at the bottom here on the bracket that we're going to fix. And then all the ones along the uh, top edge of the fender. So, we get a better look at the repair. And uh, this piece here that uh, needs to be replaced. The uh, lower rear fender and uh, got a little bit of rust going on here. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, evaluate this and uh, see how we're going to tackle it. All right, the next step is to get this door adjusted. And what I ran into was the hinge didn't have enough <clears throat> adjustment in it. This top hinge needs to go out. The bottom hinge needs to go in. And it needs to go in about that much. And you can see there, there, there's not enough play in the bolt. There, there's um, cage nuts behind this thing. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is grind this down, this hinge down on this side so that I can get the bolt in with the hinge in the proper place to get the door aligned. And I'll do the similar thing on the bottom hinge. Okay, it's the next day and uh, the door is 50-80% uh, mm, better than it was yesterday. This uh, ridge right here is less than half and the door still needs to come out this way a little bit and uh, the gap here this door is still proud of the body uh, boy not by much but it but it still is which means the door still needs to go this way a little bit more so to do that uh, I actually had to move this top hinge this way and the bottom hinge this way inwards you can see where the hinge used to be and where it is now and to do that I had to elongate the uh, hinge with a file so because it wouldn't wouldn't move far enough with the uh, slot that was originally in there so I did that and uh, What's happening now, when you close the door, this part of the hinge is actually hitting the body here. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to move this part of the body in a little. Um, and uh, then on the outside, I still have the issue with the, uh, lower fender mount and and oh by the way the uh the body right here was sticking out which wouldn't allow the fender as i'm moving this door in this fender is going to have to move in too so that so that the edges align and uh, this was sticking out too far and i think that was because the old hinge um that was in there um when it opened there wasn't a bolt holding this side on. So I think what was happening, it was when it was opening or closing, this part right here was moving this way and it actually 
push this part of the body out. So down here we have the issue with the uh, lower fender mount just hanging on by a thread. It's rusted off and uh, we've got this new reproduction that uh, we'll put in there and I'm going to put it back about a quarter of an inch this way again because I'm moving this door hinge back and uh, I'd rather have to put fender washers in here than have this thing too far out and then there would be nothing I could do about it. Okay, we're inside the car now looking at the uh, bottom passenger door hinge. And you can see, I think a little better now, what I'm talking about. Um, that bolt on the left hand side which you know goes through the uh, fender well is not on right now and when I close the door you can see it moving potentially if it wasn't shifted so far to the left it would be pushing that pillar out without that bolt in and that, that's what pushed that pillar out and you can also see right here where it's hidden the pillar, the hinge is closing and hitting that pillar. So I gotta take some metal out of there and then reinforce it. Um, so, cause that hinge actually needs to be moved inwards another, uh, I don't know, 16th or an eighth of an inch. So this is a really good view showing you exactly what's going on here. For what it's worth, what I do when I'm getting ready to move a hinge I put a little blue tape right on the edge. That way, when I move the hinge, I can have a reference point as to how far I'm moving it. And I did the same thing here. I put, I needed to move this door this way. So I put a little blue tape on the edge and then I moved the door this way. And, and you can see you have a reference as to how far you moved it. If you need to move it back, you, you know, you have a reference point. So uh, I'm getting ready to move this hinge this way. Oh, maybe a 32nd of an inch, maybe a 16th. And uh, it's a trial and error thing for me. Well, this hinge needs to move this way. And uh, I've got the uh, room in the slot here, but unfortunately, it's hitting this ridge right here. I need to take a little slice of the hinge off right here, which means, unfortunately, I have to take the door off again because that's the only way to get the hinge off. So uh, two steps forward, one step back. All right, I took about uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch off the right side of this hinge. So we stick it in there. We can see the blue tape where it used to be. And of course I want to move it to the right. So now I can move it to the right, but I better elongate that hole just a little bit more with a hand file, just to make sure that I've got enough play to make the adjustments that I need. All right, it's the next day and uh, we're gonna put in this new um, lower fender mount and we're gonna fabricate some metal to go into here and cut this out here, this rusty area here. And this is right here is where the fender mount welds to the pillar. So, be forewarned, I am not a fabricator. I've never welded before, but uh, I bought a flux core welder, so we're gonna give it a shot. Thanks to YouTube videos, I think I'm an expert now, ha ha. And uh, what I'm gonna do first is, uh, I have some flashing material, you know, just really thin aluminum, and I'm gonna mock up the uh, piece. Um, and then, you know, have, bring it around and I'm gonna mock it up in, in this material first. Then I'm gonna measure from here to the ground 
and then from here to the frame, because I think it's critical to get this in the right position. Of course, I know where it mounts in the back too. Um, and I'll mark that. And then uh, I've got some uh, 22 gauge steel that uh, I'll fabricate in the vise. And uh, I think I'll um, sheet metal screw it in place with a couple of sheet metal screws and then uh, try tacking it with the welder. So uh, I'll come back from time to time and give you updates. Just an interesting note. This is the uh, back side of the lower bracket. And uh, the uh, this was, there's a couple of washers here and they were right here and this bracket was sitting up like this. To the best of my knowledge, this is JB Weld that we're holding these washers in this bracket on before. So uh, now that I'm a master welder, we're gonna fix that. All right, let's see if we can cut this off. Got the lower fender mount in place. It's a quarter inch in this way compared to where the original one was. I just have one little screw holding it for now. And uh, I've also fabricated this piece here at a 22 gauge that'll fit up in there. And uh, I think I'm at the point now where I'm concerned about the distance from the fender to here. So I'm gonna bring the fender up and do a dry fit. Uh, then if that works, I will um, screw this in with a couple of sheet metal screws just to hold it in place and fabricate the additional pieces that I need for here and one in the back and uh, weld it all up. Okay, I've got this thing tacked in place. Uh, I'm warning you, this is the first time I've ever welded, so uh, those are my joints. Um, it's not the prettiest, but you know what? It's a hell of a lot better than it was. And it's pretty damn strong. So uh, there's my upper where my uh, 22 gauge just put a few tacks in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to undercoat all this when I'm done. Keep it from rusting, hopefully. So now I got to uh, fabricate a piece to go in here. And I'll tack that in place. One last look before we put the fender on at the repair. I put a thin layer of uh, fiberglass over the joints to you know prevent moisture from getting in then I put a thin coating of undercoating but uh, this uh, mount is on it's rock solid and uh, it's in the correct place that it needs to be so uh, yeah let's go ahead and put the fender on okay I've got the truck back together fender on bumper bolted back on uh, I'm really happy with the door. Um, the gaps look good. Uh, as you recall, when we started, this was recessed in about three eighths of an inch. It's almost flat now. The bottom of the door down here was sticking out about a quarter of an inch. It's almost flat here. I could probably get it a little better by putting in a thinner rubber gasket, but uh, I need to investigate that. Um, I also put in new door glass. Uh, I'll post that on a separate video. And uh, the door just works really nicely now. You don't have to slam it anymore. So very happy with this uh, project and uh, hope it helps somebody else out there. Thanks for watching. Take care.